Gamar Joba from Gracia. This is the Rorschach Georgia update from the 30th of November 2023. Quick summary of what's going down in Georgia. On Thursday the 23rd, European Parliament passed a resolution with 495 votes addressing the killing of Tamas Ginturi and the abduction of Levan Dotiashvili by Russian forces in Georgia's Khinvali region. Resolution condemned both incidents, calling for a thorough investigation into the murders. Members of the European Parliament reaffirmed their support for Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity, condemning Russia's illegal occupation of Abkhazia and Schinbali, South Ossetia. Parliament urged Russia to implement the 2008 ceasefire agreement, withdraw occupation forces, release all Georgian citizens held in the occupied areas. Uh, members of the European Parliament called on the Council to impose sanctions on those violating Georgian sovereignty while denouncing Russian interference in Georgia's politics. On Friday the 24th, Nikol Pashinyan, the Prime Minister of Armenia, answered citizens' questions live on air about whether Armenia was ready to recognize Abkhazia and South Ossetia's occupied territories. He said, quote, we fully and unequivocally protect Georgia's unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity, independence, democracy, and statehood, end quote. Pashinyan's pro-Georgian statement angered leaders of separatist regions. Aslan Bshania, the president of occupied Abkhazia, blamed the Armenian, the Armenian leadership statement of Western influence. Moreover, ethnic Armenian members of the Abkhazian parliament criticize the Armenian Prime Minister for changing positions on recognizing the sovereignty of separatist regions. Pashinian said that since 2019, Armenia has consistently voted in favor of Georgia's territorial integrity in the UN General Assembly. Abkhazia does not publicize this statistic, but there are more ethnic Armenians in Abkhazia than there are ethnic Abkhaz. As discussed on previous updates, on Tuesday the 28th, the National Environmental Agency invalidated a 49-year hunting license for 100,000 hectares or 1,000 square kilometers of land in Racha granted by David Khidasheli, granted to David Khidasheli. Recall that he's a Russian-based businessman with connections to Vladimir Putin's inner circle, close ties with Bidzina Ivanishvili. Since the 27th of September, demonstrators have been protesting against Khidasheli's hunting license. In November, the protesters went to Tbilisi to demand the revocation of the hunting permit, they said that the National Environmental Agency gave the, the license to Chida Shelley without public consultation, which is certainly true. The agency embarrassingly excused, their embarrassed excuse for withdrawing the permit was that Chida Shelley's company, HG Capra Caucasia LLC, which got the permit, had failed to support to submit a report on the hunting farm's impact on the Emerald Network, a territory that falls inside the licensed land, which is full of unique habitats, animals, and plants. And they just happened to notice that right after the protests. Speaking of Ivanishvili, on Tuesday the 28th, Politico's 2024 ranking of Europe's influencers named Bidzina Ivanishvili, former prime minister of Georgia, as an oligarch. Politico placed him in the disruptors category due to his potential to reshape the political landscape. Ivanishvili ranked eighth, marking the first Georgian on the list. Politico said that despite retiring to a Black Sea park, Ivanishvili wields significant control over Georgia's ruling party, the Georgian Dream, or Otsneba. You can say that again. Politico expressed concerns about him displacing Tbilisi from the EU's orbit and into the Kremlin's influence. Analysts attribute Georgia's pro-Moscow shift to Ivanishvili. They mention human rights regressions and that Georgia has become a hub for sanctions-busting exports to Russia. Now under the United National Movement Party, or the Natsebi, or as Otsneba likes to call them, the opposition. On Monday the 27th, Levan Khabeshvili, chairman of the Natsebi, confirmed in an interview with TV Formula that Nika Meli... Melia, former chairman of the party, is no longer a member of the party. Khabeshvili stated that Melia is not in the ranks and does not represent the party. However, besides what Khabeshvili said in the interview, the party did not release any official statement regarding Nika Melia's departure. Some Natsebi members expressed their frustration over Nika Melia not joining an 11-point manifesto led by Misha, who reportedly feels better. The manifesto was published last week on the 20th anniversary of the Rose Revolution. 
In November 2003, the Rose Revolution brought about a peaceful transfer of power. The people protested against rigged, the rigged outcome of the parliamentary elections when the leadership pretended that Shevardnadze's party, the Citizens' Union, had won. This led directly to relentless demonstrations and to the resignation of President Shevardnadze a couple of weeks later. This marked the end of the Soviet-era leadership in the country and the real beginning of Georgia's pro-European political path. On Thursday the 23rd, Radio Liberty, an international media outlet, published an article by Joshua Kuchera uh, titled, 20 Years After the Rose Revolution, Georgia's Political Parties Hate Each Other, But They Also Largely Agree. The article reflects the mixed feelings on the 20th anniversary of the Rose Revolution, a turning point in Georgia's politics and foreign policy. According to the German Friedrich Ebert Foundation study in 2021, despite intense animosity between the ruling party, Otsneba, and the largest opposition party, the Natsebi, their policies share more commonalities and differences. No more? Follow the link in the show notes. Now, a joint statement of international organizations on the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls. On Saturday, the 25th European Union, uh, the United Nations Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, NATO, and various embassies in Georgia issued a joint statement which underscores the persistent challenge of gender-based violence in the country despite government and civil society efforts. The statement highlights the urgency of eliminating violence against women in politics emphasizing the crucial need for strengthened legislation and policies to protect women's rights and advance gender equality. 54% of female candidates in Georgia have faced various forms of violence and harassment during their political careers. Statement also addresses economic violence, highlighting the importance of reducing the gender pay gap, ensuring equal access to financial resources, securing inheritance rights, and promoting equal employment opportunities. Document urges collaboration among stakeholders to create a future where women can fully participate in economic, social, and political life without fear of violence or harassment. On Monday the 27th, a powerful storm battered the Black Sea coastline and caused significant damage to the region's infrastructure. According to some reports, this is the most intense storm the Black Sea's experienced in 100 years. Storm hit cities of Batumi, Koboleti, Poti, and Anaklia, damaging footpaths, paving stones, benches, and seasonal cafe bars. Water flooded the streets. Residential houses offer, also suffered damages. The debris from the storm blocked drainage channel, hindering repair works. On Monday the 27th, Gori City Hall announced the People's Republic of China Embassy granted 500,000 Chinese yuan, which is about 70,000 U.S. dollars, to Gori Municipality, in Shidakartli region, Vladimir Kinchegashishvili, the Gori's mayor, and Chao Chen Yi, the Chinese ambassador to Georgia, recently signed the grant agreement in a meeting at the Chinese embassy. The municipality will use the funds to construct sports mini stadiums with an artificial cover in Mereti and Kvemo Asveti, two villages near the occupation line. The city hall intends to launch a tender for stadium construction in the next few days. 70,000 bucks are going to be pretty small stadiums. But anyway, end of this week, um, we'll end this week with uh, the Hajapuri Index, copied from the Economist Big Max Index, a measure of purchasing power parity. The Hajapuri Index is used a little bit more to check the government's inflation figures, but is also regional as well. On Monday, the 27th, the International School of Economics, or ISET, published its Hajapuri Index for November. <coughs> the index tracks inflation by using the most famous Georgian food, Khajapuri, in November 2023, the average cost of preparing a standard portion of delicious Imerethi and Khajapuri increased to 6.47 Lati, a little over three U.S. dollars, make, marking a 5.5% rise from October 2023 and a 7% decrease from November 2022. The higher ho- cost of Khajapuri ingredients resulted from the seasonal trend of increasing milk and dairy product prices. <clears throat> and that's it for this week. Remember, you can buy one of our really cool and environmentally friendly t-shirts as Christmas presents. They're made of 100% unbleached organic cotton, rare and hard to find, grown in Jindon, Texas, spun in it in the Carolinas, sewn and printed in Missouri. To buy one, follow the link in the show notes. Notes. We'll leave another link in case you want to make a donation or help us out financially. Nachwamdis.